This is the Ford 6.0, and I know these get a bad rap, but check this out. 476,000 miles. And I'm not sure if this is the original engine or not, but what I do know is that number's impressive regardless of what you think. Boom, glow plug. Warning, beginning of the video here, I need to show you there are two harnesses. We'll explain why when we get into the repair process, but pay attention. Your vehicle might have this style harness, your vehicle might have this style harness, but it will not work interchangeably. If you have this one on your stock vehicle, you need to get this harness and likewise with here because they're different size connectors. It won't reach the glow plug if you try to cram this into the block that uses this. Working on the power stroke today, F350, the issue we're running into is I think the glow plugs are bad. We determine that by testing the glow plugs. You can measure the resistance in each circuit, and if you get infinity on the resistance, then you've got bad glow plugs. And right there on the tip, that's what gets really, really hot and helps the combustion of these diesels. I bought the harnesses too from Dorman because these have a design flaw. You see this little thin piece of plastic in between this big chunk and this big chunk? Well, this is the side that sits in the block. And so when you're going to pull these out, you're gonna to wanna to grab some penetrating oil because they get stuck and that little piece of plastic likes to break. If one or two of ours do break in the block, I think I've got a way to get them out, but I'll tell it to you now just in case I get lucky. You think if you put a wood screw into this part of the block, then it would give you enough to pull on to get that out if you do have one that breaks. But let's just hope it doesn't happen to us here. And as far as glow plugs go, I bought the second cheapest ones. And also these ones say NASCAR Performance. Now I want to talk to you about why I think it's glow plugs. It has a very hard start condition, which I initially thought might just be batteries. So I went ahead and replaced those with some brand new ones on both sides. And it cranks hard. It wants to start, but it doesn't actually kick over, particularly if it's cold. And I'm blowing white smoke out of the tailpipe. Now, I know what you're thinking. White smoke is probably an injector that failed and it's dumping too much fuel in the combustion chamber. But... I happen to think in this case it's glow plugs because of the hard start condition and because when I tested the glow plugs I had three out of eight measuring at infinity. This is how I tested the glow plugs. See this is the control box and then you've got your two connectors there and if you disconnect those connectors you can put a probe in them and measure each circuit and that's where you're going to get the infinity measurements and then you know that glow plug is bad. We're not going to change that right now. But if we still have some problems after we replace the glow plugs, you can buy those boxes for pretty cheap. I just don't have another 150 or so dollars laying around that I can waste right now. I turned my light on for this one because I think if we get our eyes right into the pit of abyss here, this plug is where the harness plugs in on the passenger side. And I think maybe somewhere on this lead or close there too, is where the driver's side plugs in. Here's the biggest problem with the glow plugs on this truck and how, when you're gonna go do this job. You access them through here. I think we gotta take our wheel well off and there's a few wire connectors that poke through. Anytime you see this kind of thing, you're gonna wanna be careful because there's a loom on the other side. But I think if we take this cover off, we're gonna be able to see our glow plugs right in there, like kind of right through this, if that makes sense. And I have no idea what tools I'm gonna need. So I just brought the whole box. Passenger side here. Looks like we got three bolts up top here. We'll go see what that holds on. Okay, looks like that's right here. So that's no big deal. And then we got one wire loom there. Another wire loom there. Another one there. And then a few of these bolts. One, two, looks like maybe there used to be some down in here, but not anymore on this truck. And then one more little guy up here at the bumper. I'm using metric. These are an 11, that guy's an 8, and this guy is a 5.5. That's a weird size. Well, this job's already starting off like I thought it might. We got one bolt out successfully, or one nut anyways, and then two of these went ahead and just snapped. I think that's going to happen to a lot of these old guys. Well, found two more little pop rivets that got to come out, so I suppose I should mention those to you. They just pull straight out, careful not to break them. 
on these guys here, I just like to grab these little needle nose pliers and just kind of push them through from this side. And then you just kind of push it up and through and it's out of the way. I like doing that better than pulling it down because then you have no risk of damaging that harness when you pull it down to try to get it from the other side. If you got any tips or tricks on how to get these damn forward wheel well liners out, I would I would appreciate it because I'm just using all of the muscle and leverage. I might be doing something wrong. So, and then you just gotta get a little bit of come on now. So those pop out pretty easy, and then when you scoot in here. Here's that canister, I think it's a vacuum canister where you can see I broke my bolts. Good news is they're serviceable. They just slide in there. I'm, I'm not gonna change them. But now we can scoot our eyes right up here and see our glow plugs. And here you can see this harness, a lot easier from the bottom than you could from the top. And that's gonna be the piece that we're replacing. So I'm gonna disconnect that and then I'm gonna take this little cover off to expose the harness and spray it all with penetrating oil, let it sit for a bit, and then go to the other side and start that. I'm here to tell you, I think I did this wrong, but we bought the new harness, so it's okay. You've got this fill tube right there, and I think that impedes the clearance that you have to pull these back. And so I just got a screwdriver up in there and started twisting and turning and popping, and ultimately it all came out. Do yourself a favor here and take off that little nut that holds this dipstick in and then you can slide that up and out of the way it gives you much more room to work with the glow plug harness but here's here's what this looks like and man it is filthy but you can see the damage i did i don't think that's supposed to be necessary but you can also see i broke some of these great Grab yourself a deep well, 10 millimeter, so you're probably going to have to borrow one from somebody because I know yours is missing, and stick it down in there, and then you kind of, I have to put an adapter on it sometimes to, to get enough leverage, but drop it down in there, break it loose, and then take it out by, like I said, throw a little adapter on there to get a little more meat on it so I can turn it. Maybe this is why people don't buy Pittsburgh tools. Nah. Okay. That's fully loose. And then because they're hard to grab, you gotta get your little magnet up in there. Get it right up in, yeah, nope. There we go, just like that. Boom, glow plug. I have no way of knowing if that's good or bad by looking at it. Maybe someone can comment below and tell me what I'm looking for. But this is what they look like so far. Seven, five, three. Uh, seven is kind of beat up. Is that bad? I don't know. Now, when you're putting these back in, I'm sure there's a torque spec, but I just kind of go tss, 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 right there. That's probably maybe just a little snap right Yeah, that felt good to me. A torque wrench would be better, but with the universal joint and all the other stuff going on in here, it's not going to give you a very accurate reading anyway. So just kind of, but not too tight because you'll snap it. All the glow plugs are in. I'm going to put the harness on now. You're going to want to lubricate these O-rings a little bit. You could spit on them or use engine oil or whatever. I use chain saver, wax-based chain lubricant. I don't know. Does it matter? Just lubricate them a little bit. Well, this number seven cylinder is an absolute son of a bitch because the heater box is just in the way. So I'm, I'm taking it apart to try to get more wiggle room in there so I can try to cram it in there and then I'll see if I can put it all back together. Well, let's see if we got it now. Working on a Ford is kind of like getting a colonoscopy and an upper endoscopy at the same time. So that one is seated to that level. Uh, number three looks similar. Number five looks similar. You can see my hack job there, but I'd say that looks similar. So now we'll just see if we can plug this back in and go do the driver's side. Working on the driver's side here and it's pretty much wash, rinse, repeat. You wanna get these little connectors out. But this one has something unique. One eight millimeter bolt right there. Alrighty, 
driver's side here, there's that obnoxious box, but I think I might be able to pull it out on this side without ruining it. And on the top side here, I had to go ahead and remove the air box because the harness plugs in right there. And you kind of sort of have some access down in here to try to pull on these glow plugs. So maybe the driver's side will be easier. Wow. I am here to tell you, driver's side so far, way easier. You might be able to even reach all these from the top. Might not have to take the uh, wheel well off, but I don't know, that back one, number eight there, could be kind of tricky, but way easier. Set these out for you so you can take a look here with me. This is driver's side, passenger side, and these were so much easier. You don't have to take that wheel well off. You can get them all from the top. If you look at my driver front cylinder, which I believe is number two, that one looks like it's the worst. And then after that, I would say number seven. And the other six look okay. This is number three. That's really good. So my guess is actually he probably blew a glow plug and just replaced one. Whoop. Um, just replaced the one and then kept driving. I don't know why you would do that. Just, just do them all at the same time, right? Okay, I'm going to show you a little trick here. You take a glove and you put it over the top of your socket. Just like so. And now your fastener stays in place. This was important because when I was putting the glow plug into this cylinder right here, it kind of fell cattywampus and kind of got wedged in that head there. And so I, I had to use a magnet and fish it out. And then I'm going to try to put it in this way so it doesn't just drop in. The other one's just dropped in no problem. Okay, now that we got the correct harness in place. Done? Maybe. Stop it.